Well, I'm trying to make bread again, off grid. Oops, let me go back the other way a little bit. Anyway, I've already made my dough, and I've got another video where I show my recipe how I made my dough. So what I'm going to do right now, get some stuff out of the way. The table's kind of crowded up today, y'all, so please forgive that. I'm using a glove on my hand because I have a wound right here. I don't like to uh, handle food if I've got a wound on my hand. So uh, I put on the glove to take care of that. Alright. My dough, I made it a little while ago, about oh, an hour, a little over an hour ago. Timer six to go off, but it's already doubled, so anyway. Uh, so it's ready to to uh, punch down. Already got a pan here. This is going to be bread that's going to be baked in that pressure cooker that I shown before. So I've got a pan here. Now I'm going to knead this some more. really feeling good. The dough feels really good. The uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and put the recipe that I use. It's basically used to be a, a bread machine recipe. It makes a pound and a half loaf of bread and uh, uh, I think Ann Squirrel. <laughs> anyway, it makes a pound and a half loaf of bread which is pretty much what we need to make a few sandwiches with. I don't make bread once a week and then try to keep it all week. We're in an off-grid cabin. I don't have air conditioning and <clears throat> I have what you might call spotty refrigeration because I've got a little chest freezer but we only run it at night for a couple of hours on the generator when we're running the generator to do some other stuff. So <clears throat> the rest of the time we don't have it going. Uh, now on the really hot days that we had this past summer when it was up around 100 degrees, we did run the generator more than we wanted to, mainly because we needed the fans blowing. But uh, I, we use our solar power in the daytime. Are you getting this? Yeah. We use our solar power in the daytime to charge up our laptops, tablets, to uh, run our internet, which is Exceed satellite internet, and it'll run the uh, internet modem and. Uh, we actually have a, we got a new router, but we've got it put away because we've got a virtual router on all the computers. So if we need to go online, more more than one of us needs to go online, well then we've got got that. We don't even have to use the, the actual router that came. So, alright. I always just use my bowl now. Uh, it works just fine roll it up, try to pinch it together some. It's not going to be perfect, but that's not a bad looking loaf, don't you think? Don't you think it looks pretty good? And if you don't like it, you can say so. You won't hurt my feelings. Anyhow, now, set this over here. Put it in the pan. And I, you can be kind of rough with bread. You know, it's not delicate. So, I'm going to press it down, press it down, press it down. And I'll get a sharp knife over here to split down the middle so that it will have a good good rise to it and be pretty. And then I'll work with a knife. This one's sharp enough. I need to resharpen all my knives. Anyway, I'm just going to do this right across the middle of it. That middle part will probably puff up. Anyway, now that part's done. And, uh, you get that in there a little closer. Maybe. That part's done. It's split down the middle. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise probably another hour. Uh, this plastic wrap out. 
this is the plastic wrap I had over the bowl anyway. So now, cover it up. That noise you hear is the inverter, the fan coming on it, because it's warming up in here. All right, now, yeah, I'll set it right over there in the kitchen window where the sun is coming through and it'll heat it up and get a good rise on it. I did wheat bread yesterday <coughs> and it came up pretty good just by doing this but it is a little bit I, know, I never have good luck with wheat bread. If you've got any tips for how to really make good wheat bread please let me know because I have a difficult time getting it to be fluffy and get enough loft to it that we like the way that just plain white bread does. Uh, so if you have any ideas about how to get wheat bread to rise a little better, not be so dense, just let me know and I'll be glad to uh, to uh, take you up on your suggestions. Used to, years ago, I put uh, vitamin C tablets. I crushed up a vitamin C tablet and put it in there. That seemed like it did okay, but I'm, I don't have any of that right now. And I don't really want to buy <coughs> extra products or things from the grocery store if I don't have to. Or I don't want to have to go online and buy some kind of thing that makes things rise better. I'll just, I'll just really, uh, I'll just make it like, just make white bread if I can't get it to rise better. Okay, I'll be back with uh, the bread I'm after you show you. This is the inside of the pressure cooker that I'm going to be using to bake the bread. Probably showed this before, but you can see that there's two layers of canning rings in here. Oops, canning rings in here. There's the bottom layer. They're all laid down with a big part down. The top layer is just four of the wide mouth ones with a wide part up. Then <coughs> I put this in here because it fits. This is a rack from my small pressure canner that I now use for a pressure cooker. Anyway, then uh, it raises it up off the very bottom. I don't like it to be right on the bottom because it'll burn the bread. And uh, I did pretty good with it yesterday doing this way for the wheat bread. As you can see, this bread is already rising and it's probably got another 30 minutes to go. Something like that. So, uh, yeah. Give it plenty of time to get nice and big. And then I will get this preheated, put the lid on it, get it preheated, and bake the bread off in it. I'll bring you back for that.